So, so just you're a vegan basically, but you eat scrap meat. I think the word is freegan. <laughs> so you're a freegan. I can just create a human farm where they live net positive lives, run through and just shoot them all in the back of the head. Would you be on board with that? You're going to try and make me say something like this publicly. I think the reducitarian message is way more radical than my message. Because yeah, it's radical sure, to cut sure, heads sure. off for sandwiches. I don't know. I hear cooked human meat tastes a bit like roast pork. <laughs> Hi, I'm Joe. Your name's Joe? Yeah. My name's Joe. <laughs> Unreal. <laughs> so, the, the sign here says, why aren't you vegan? But uh, do you have any, um, do you oppose the ethical principle of veganism? Um, I just maybe like to be a bit clearer on what it is. So I totally buy that the suffering of animals matters um, in the relevant senses as much as humans do. What I'm not so sure about, right, is like a non-consequentialist framing of veganism, right? And what I mean by that is like, I don't see why it's a problem to eat meat insofar as it doesn't actually affect um, reduction in factory farming. So I'm talking about like eating, say, meat for leftovers in meals um, and like being upfront about that. Okay, so yeah, I'd be more, most concerned with um, whether or not uh, an animal's rights has been violated in order to produce that food, uh, mainly, like the negative rights I'm talking about. And... Uh, whether or not that animal is sentient, because their sentience is what we share in common. Mm -hmm. And you're on board with uh, being against animal suffering. Mm -hmm. You said uh, you're not on board with taking a non-consequentialist view. Yeah. So that would be my view, would be a rights-based view. Mm -hmm. But then you, you sort of lumped this non-consequentialist view in with eating leftover scraps. Mm -hmm. So the way I see it, the rights already been violated by the point the animal's been killed, right? After the fact, there's not, there's not much to be done, right? I'm, I will join you on the picket line, and I will not buy animal-based products in supermarkets. Why not? Why wouldn't you buy them? Because that would put money into the animal farming industry and that does contribute to factory farming. Right? Yeah, of course. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not just opposed to factory farming, by the way. I'm, okay. I'm opposed to the animals having their negative rights violated. So like, you could have a net positive farm and, and murder those animals. I would consider that opposed to the ethical principle of veganism. All right. Uh, so I'm not just opposed to factory farming or to re my, my position yeah. isn't just a negative, a negative utilitarian sense in, in so much as to reduce suffering. I think that leads to egregious conclusions if you follow it to its logical conclusion. Okay. Yeah, like, you know, if I sh shot you in the back of the head, you didn't suffer, but I murdered you, you know. So, For sure. But, so you're on board with supply and demand, which is good. Some people might not be like, so you're on board with the fact that if you <laughs> if you create a demand for something, you're contributing yeah. to it. No, look, my, my perfect world is also that factory farming and even animal farming doesn't exist. Um, I guess maybe I'm a strict utilitarian in that like, it wouldn't bother me so much if um, there were humane cattle farms um, where they lived, you know, as long or longer than they potentially were in the wild. That would bother me less, the actual act of killing um, does it bother you at all though? Like, say, say it, it bothers you less than extreme yeah. suffering. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, there's an interesting one. It's like, um, you know, animals die in the wild, like, all the time. I don't think it's necessarily better for the cow that it's, um, as I say, shot with like a um, one of those pulses, than say, torn up by like however many wolves that were in the wild. If it dies naturally, that would obviously be better. Um, I, I'm, I'm aware we probably don't disagree that much. <laughs> um, yeah, like if someone dies naturally, it's not a rights violation, is it? It's like you haven't killed them. Okay, so uh, this might be where yeah, consequentialism is a bit unpalatable. It's harder to derive rights. Yeah, if you're a pure, pure consequentialist, I can just uh, I can just create a human farm where they live net positive lives in a hypothetical, is it okay to uh, run through and just shoot them all in the back of the head provided no one, uh, it caused no one any suffering and no one, uh, there was no extrinsic suffering because of it, no one knew about it. So would, that, would you be on board with that? Because that would be, you know, that wouldn't necessarily cut against uh, the suffering argument. So here's the thing, you ideally would factor in the down the line consequences of doing something like that. So I would be pro, say, a uh, right to human dignity in like the Bentham sense of um, a social right as opposed to a natural right. Yeah. And all that means is you give a right to humans and I think a right to animals as you're describing, just so that you don't get these mass exploitations which absolutely would cause massive suffering. If one thing, everyone have huge insecurity then I'll end up in one of these farms. No, but what if, it, what if we, we handled uh, any Con like any extrinsic suffering or any like what if it was on a, an on island or something and no one knew about it would that be, would you be on board with just killing all those people at once if there was no suffering it it becomes harder to justify what i worry is what's grounding this natural rights in yeah even people or animals okay. because i'm i'm not sure how to ground rights that isn't in a sense that's consequentialist or okay. a, a true sentience that's that's a good that's a good question um you're not sure how to ground rights i would say uh, based on inherent value Mm -hmm. That's what human rights are based off of. Uh, we share inherent values. So no matter your race, uh, you know, socioeconomic status or things like this, um, we grant humans rights 
and children rights, even if they're not as developed or things like this, we just grant those rights based on inherent value. And I'd say that's because we are sentient. What happens to us matters to us. Mm. And uh, we share that characteristic with animals as well. Sure. But would you be okay calling that a social rights rather than a natural rights? So I, th I think when you're saying, when you say social rights, are you talking about rights that uh, in law? It would be something of the effect of, okay, let's take a um, view of how a society we want to live in, right? And one metric for which to do so would be a high utility society, right? And then you would construct laws therein on something like a rule-based utilitarian rule that would justify those. Now, out of that comes out of things like human rights because you actually want people to have an inherent sense of dignity and not be, say, anxious about being exploited all the time because that's just the sort of society you want to live in. And I would extend that to animals. I would absolutely extend that to animals. But the meta- you would extend social rights to animals? Yeah, I would absolutely, I, look, if I could legislate tomorrow um, that animals couldn't be killed and used for meat consumption, I would do it. <laughs> so even if it caused no suffering? Um, even if doing so caused no suffering, well, I, I would do it because it causes them suffering. So even yeah, but if- But it doesn't necessarily, like killing doesn't entail suffering. Violating rights doesn't entail suffering. Violating social rights doesn't entail suffering. That's what I'm saying. You, you are on board with animal rights by your, you, we just have different, different definitions of rights. It's like a semantics thing in a way, legal, rights protect us as humans. Mm. We should extend basic fundamental rights to animals in law mm. based on the fact that we share this property sentience which gives us inherent value. Mm. Um, now, you don't have to call, that, call it moral rights if you, or natural rights if you have an issue with that, but like, I think we're basically saying the same thing. We'll find out if I really do believe that I wouldn't protect animals if I didn't think that doing so would alleviate their suffering. If, if, if I actually view, say, killing in themselves is a harm in and of itself. I struggle to justify why it is because I, I genuinely tend to think that um, harm is always related to um, suffering. Well, I, well, let, I me put it, let, me, let me just say, like, you're sitting here right now. What if I, I just give all these... Uh, have you seen Men in Black? Yes. You know how they got that... that they have yeah. the memory loss thing? Sorry. What if I just get you shot in the back of the head right now? You don't know any different, yeah. right? I, men in black raid this whole school. They forget about you. Mm. We erase you from, on, from any record. Yeah. Would you want a right protecting you from that? Because you didn't suffer at all. You actually... So, so, yeah. here's, so here's the thing, and this is where I get. I'm, I'm going to be more radical and against the grain <laughs> instead, of public, instead of public mindset here. Um, but, but genuinely, here's the thing. The reason why I would want a right protecting me of that is because I wouldn't want paranoia all day, every day, that someone could pull up and do that to me, right? Well, let's, adju let's just address that and say that, that wouldn't, you, you wouldn't be paranoid because you wouldn't know about it, uh, pre preemptively know about it. So we can address that too. Like, I'm just taking away these variables. No, for sure, for sure, for sure. And to look, see if you really are against rights. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I think I maybe do have to accept that radical conclusion. And I, I struggle to give the language why I wouldn't. Um, and for animals? Uh, what I'd like to be clear about is whatever standard I apply will apply equally to humans and to animals. So what happened here is Joe actually bit the bullet on uh, being shot in the head as long as it didn't cause any suffering or any preemptive paranoia about being shot in the head. So therefore his position um, does cut against both human and animal rights. Joe is very consistent though. He doesn't have a double standard when it comes to humans or animals, but he just thinks that if you take care of any suffering that might happen, extrinsic or of the individual, then it's okay to shoot them in the head, which is against both human and animal rights. So we have a different position there. So now, have you ever heard veganism, ex veganism explained from a rights perspective like that? Um, have you just heard from a suffering perspective or this something like this? I haven't heard it in the context of um, animal ethics specifically, but I am familiar with rights-based versus consequentialist accounts of ethics. Yeah, so for me, just, just to be clear, like I do have a, a combination of rights and consequentialism. Mm -hmm. It's just after, after a certain threshold of utility or suffering, I will say that we have to let go of the right of that individual, mm -hmm. you know, and the threshold can be very high. Mm -hmm. So I'm not, I'm not, I'm not for like mass murdering infinite universes to protect the right of one mouse, mm -hmm. you know, so there's obviously a threshold and I think it's something called threshold deontology or something like this. I don't mm -hmm. know where that line is, but I'm sure it's quite high before mm -hmm. I would say we can test on one human to save a million or something like this. Mm -hmm. It would have to be in the billions or something like that. I don't know. Yeah. Um, well, it's difficult, right? Because that threshold is going to be arbitrary. So, I, so, yeah. I, so, so I think, you know, my consequentialist position at least doesn't have that problem. You don't have to pick an arbitrary threshold. Um, well, it has a very serious problems. So you, if you're pure utilitarian, um, if five people get pleasure from abusing one person, then the u utility from outweighs the suffering there. So then uh, from a utilitarian point, point of view, that would be something that's okay to do. Yeah, and in isolation, that is an annoying um, entailment. Well, um, with rights, you don't have that. If that what, person what's has what's rights. What's interesting though is the, the vegan movement Movement, I take it to be in the 21st century, largely driven by Peter Singer, who is much more radically utilitarian than I am. Um, well, maybe no. he's just one leading. Well, no. Okay. 
Well, he, he wrote a book called Animal Liberation, which was, you know, a lot of people read and, and loved. But veganism was coined by Donald Watson mm -hmm. in 1944. And uh, the definition was coined by Leslie Cross in the 50s, I think. And uh, the, the original definition of veganism was that man should, the doctrine that man should live without exploiting animals. Okay. Yeah. Very, very now, far. Peter Singer is a utilitarian. I'd probably disagree with him on many topics. I don't really know the breadth of his... If he's pure utilitarian, if he is a pure utilitarian, I'd have a very strong... Well, he's, he's very radical. He's, he's, like, he's pro, like, fourth trimester, which means, like, post-birth abortions um, for the sake of utility. So it's, like, it's radical. Yeah, it's well, rights terrific. would protect that baby from that. Yeah, yeah. For sure. Um, yeah. But uh, provided they're sentient, um, you know. Yeah, so, yeah. so this is what I mean. It's, like... There are something called compete. You want to pick, pick a consistent view. Okay. Yeah, because, I mean, you can find out what... Because, like, a lot of people haven't thought this in depth and sometimes and when you get to my views like sometimes it gets a bit blurry at some point so i mean it's not you know it's there's some moving parts there but i definitely believe in rights and i definitely believe that and I, and that doesn't mean i don't take suffering and utility into account of course those things all matter but okay. rights has to be in there here's here's a question for you then when i'm scrapping leftovers um of meat that i haven't bought that that, that i don't think consequentially can just affect where'd you get it from well, so I did. So I didn't right so so here's here's the thing this is the this is the difficulty um of being, i i worry like um, there's a difficulty in dilution of messaging here because like on the one hand um, maybe this is a more interesting thing to talk about as well on the one hand I, it would be fantastic if everyone were vegan right but I worry that going vegan is so unappealing to so many people it dis, it, uh, dis um, encourages them from eating less meat or doing something less than best which would be better um, ah. for, for as we're in the economy now that's, that's just a messaging problem right I get what you're saying yeah so You're saying that um, if you advocate for this um, all or nothing kind of view, then people will choose nothing over all. Yeah, and, it, and look, it's just a war. You know, I've just admitted, I've just, you know, uh, basically something like committed to um, this shot in the back of the head rule, actually being at pain of consistency, because I'm that afraid of being inconsistent. This is the difficulty of, I do, I do philosophy. <laughs> and the main, you do? Yeah, as an, as an undergrad. Um, oh, wow, that's cool. Yeah, and um, yeah, so the main thing I'm looking for is to be consistent and... Well, I don't do the philosophy. <laughs> <laughs> so... There's probably a lot you could teach me about philosophy, and I don't claim to be a philosopher, and I, I just uh, try to work well, out where my... Well, fine. Well, here's, here's, here's the tactical question I'm interested in. Is like, okay. So um, I buy that the best thing to do is to not eat meat, and I, I even buy that it's a healthy, sustainable lifestyle to live. I'm a, a rugby player and a vegan okay. um, for, for however long. Okay. Um, so I, I actually think, not to you know, pat myself on the back too much, but I think role models like that are important because I don't think there are that many, like, you know, sportly active vegans, say, actually doing things. I think that maybe... I think that's good. Time. Okay. Um, so, so just, you're a vegan, basically, but you eat scrap meat. Yeah, I, th I think the I think the word is freegan. <laughs> so you're a freegan. You're, you're, you're a freegan. Yeah, I know, but if you say that in circles other than this, people think you're, like, even more knobby than if you say vegan. <laughs> so, so, so I tend to say vegan to, like, take the lesser, yeah, yeah, take the lesser yeah, yeah, evil. Yeah, yeah. I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. Freeganism's interesting. It's an interesting... Uh, are you a strict freegan? Like, do you have a very strong principle that you will only eat meat knowing that it hasn't supported the suffering of rights violations no, of animals. Okay. So, uh, so, you know, I'm, I'm, ve I'm very honest and, uh, you know, this, oh, this doesn't do me too dirty in, in the, in the way uh, your movement goes online. But um, I, where I do cheat, I accept that it's a wrong and that I shouldn't do it. Um, so, so you're so not I'm, a strict freegan? Um, ideally, I am. Um, in practice, I'm afraid I'm not. Um, uh, in I'm, principle, you think it's a good... Uh, so position. I, I, I admire people who do it, um, and I don't. And I, it's part of a wider thing of like, I think what deters people from veganism in part is the guilt of getting it wrong if they accept it is a moral wrong. So part of what that move is is to alleviate, like, no, just eat a little less meat. And you know, if you still like certain things for you, like, um, that's um, you know, that's better than what you're doing before. And you're, you're helping the cause in a sense that you wouldn't have otherwise done. And I sort of, I, I, I'm aware that that dilutes the message because it absolutely it is still absolutely does. Yeah, yeah. It's no longer a justice issue. It's a, uh, based on some personal feeling about what some metric you want to, I would, I'll support it 10% less of the time. Yeah, no, for sure. So, but but other justice issues would not accept that. But, they, but this is totally, but this is where it's consequentialist, right? This is now a tactical question. If your goal in reducing animal suffering is to say, reduce a billion dollars of purchasing power in the animal meat industry, say, right? And your strategy is a very honest one, the very consistent one about it being a rights violation. Yeah. And it deters lots and lots of the populace because it's too, so, so basically what you're saying is well, no, uh, it, some type of messaging turns people off yeah. and it creates, uh, it does more harm than good. So, okay, so, so, I'm, so, I'm, so, so I, I phrased it as an if, not that. So, yeah, so, I, so, so, if, so, so if, the, if your messaging turns out to be better, then absolutely go for that.
Yeah, yeah, but when, when we're talking about ifs, we're saying if this were true, then we ought to act in this way, yeah? Mm -hmm. That's what you're saying? Yeah. I mean, that's an interesting philosophical question, but I mean, in order for, because I, I guess what you're trying, what, what I, get, I think you're, you're wanting to do is make an argument for reducitarianism? Um, just whatever works, basically, whatever tactically works. for the vegan movement. So yeah. what I'm interested in is less money going into the animal um, farming industry. Me too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, okay. One worry I have that people don't become vegan is because um, it's too intimidating. And if they accept it as, say, the atrocity, um, they are going to um, guilt themselves, shame themselves, and just throw their you know, hands up and disavow the system altogether, right? Okay. I think that's a less okay. good outcome than people who maybe see it as eating less meat, and then less money is given, potentially the animal industry shrinks, that corresponds to less animals dying. That to me is a better outcome. Now, now, all th what that means, though, is that you have the activists who are sincere, effectively lying <laughs> to, to a broader populace. I would never. To, yeah, okay. And maybe if the well, consequences outweighed, the, yes. yeah, yeah. Well, so so maybe th there is a threshold. Yeah. There is so a threshold. Okay. So, maybe not yeah. so I, I also think it's about. So the you'd word. need data. You'd need some data to support no, your claim, no, and, so and that's why I say like it, it is an if. If your position is true, then maybe we ought to adopt that position. It would be better for for animals and animal rights or something yeah. like this. That's fine. I would probably bite the bullet on some some form of, but you don't really have empirics to back that no, up. Well, but but okay, can well, I just uh, I, can I just respond? Because I think I've, I've got a pretty because we've got a few things here. You're not a strict freegan, so you're not a vegan. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's true. Okay. Like so, you're not a yeah. practicing vegan. You might agree with the philosophy and you do freeganism. Yes. Yes. All right. And now we've got. Um, yes. Maybe we should advocate reducitarianism if that meant that less of money went to animal agriculture, but we don't have empirical data to, to show that that's a better method. We've got two things on the table. Um, less money to, you're calling reductivism as in eating less meat. Yes. Yeah, like okay. reducitarianism is kind reducitarianism. of a concept where, okay. where we advocate eat less meat instead of uh, that animals deserve yeah. rights and it's a justice issue and we should uh, eradicate our support for these industries because they're so horrible. Yep. And uh, I've got a position on that too, because I've been doing this for quite a, quite a while now, but uh, I thought we skipped over the thing that we sat down to talk about, which was the freeganism versus the non-veganism versus the veganism thing. But because this is a kind of different, if you don't have empirics to to show this, and it will just be my kind of empiric opinion based on my experience against your hypothetical here. Do you know what I mean? For sure, for sure. Because this know. one here is much more grounded I, here. No, I, I, I absolutely don't know if which messaging is more effective. Um, the only analogy I go off is the Labour Party. So where the Labour Party's won, it's one with Tony Blair, more centrist leftist policies. Mm -hmm. And similarly, Keir Starmer is hopefully going to win this next election. Um, at slightly Who's more that? centrist. Keir Starmer, he's the um, Labour um, lead candidate. I have no idea about politics, really. <laughs> I've got a oh. very base level understanding about okay. politics. Well, all, all, all it goes to show is that where left wing politics does well in the UK at elections, it does so at like a centrist moderate level, um, which yeah. as opposed um, to say the more like radical Corbynite influence. I wondered if there's an analogy for veganism and its messaging. And if you actually want to reduce money going into um, factory farming, whether or not that centrist messaging would be the appropriate It's not really act. I mean, I guess you're talking about chopping heads off less versus is not chopping heads off at all and I think one is way more I think the reducitarian message is way more radical than my message um, personally like, because yeah, it's radical sure, to cut sure, heads sure. off for sandwiches for, for, for sure for sure yeah. and I, I would agree I would agree yeah. it's just a tactical question of how do you get people on board yeah and and so so let me ask and you this okay we can stay we, we can stay on this because you seem to have a pretty strong position on this so so if I add, if I tell people right the truth Right, because because lying always has problems with it, doesn't it? Like basically, I'll be bullshitting to people if I say you just yeah. reduce, just reduce, just reduce. Because say you eat eight steaks a day, which not many people do. Then then <laughs> not many people do. Say you eat two steaks a day or whatever. Yeah. You eat however much. If I told you to reduce, every media is oh my god, this animal rights activist said reduce. Okay, so I'm gonna. So basically, it's arbitrary how much someone reduces because we're not saying reduce by twenty percent, everyone, mm -hmm. or we're not giving a pretty strict a line. And, and what that does, if I if I have this messaging reduce, mm -hmm. that and I've just got I've got like, how many views on social media? Two hundred million, and plus I've been on nearly every major mm. news outlet, radio outlet in the UK, advocating for veganism and animal rights. If I just told everyone to reduce, what have I done? I've just given people. You know, this is what happens. People will reduce if I tell them to go vegan. Mm. People will go vegetarian if I tell them to go vegan. Mm. People will have a day off eating meat if I tell them to go vegan. If I tell them animal rights matter and we should uh, abolish these industries and it's in, uh, injustice and th all these things, people will fall where they're going to fall. But all those people who are going to go vegan mm. won't go vegan because all I've ever done is redu advocate reducitarianism mm. and that will never get us to our goal. Mm. So we have to be clear about what our goal is. Mm. And in the human case, in a, in a, in a, in a, if it were humans being enslaved and killed to this a degree or at all, I would not have a reduce messaging. I mean, it would just be inconsistent with the, uh, what I'd want for the victims mm -hmm. anyway. So having inconsistent messaging 
cloudies and muddies the waters to the point where you would never get to the goal. The goal would always be reduced. So at what point would you say stop? Stop supporting it? Um, I want to say at this point you've changed my mind. <laughs> There's a big change my mind <laughs> banner here. That's, that's, what I, that's what I'd like to say. Um, you get what I'm saying? Did you see I the totally problems? Do. I, yeah. I totally do. I mean, here's, here's the truth of it, right? I, the, Earthling Ed, actually, I, I raised this with as well. It's like the role models of the movement would really struggle with this standard, right? You have to be the... If I didn't realize you, sorry, I hadn't heard you before, you clearly have a large social media following, um, in, in which case, like, there's a standard of consistency that people want to aspire to, right? Um, you know, I... Um, Can I get you something to keep you warm, dude? Um, do, you wanna, do you want a jacket here? Uh, cheers. I'll just put it on your legs, mate. Hey. Because from a utilitarian standpoint, I wouldn't want you... <laughs> I wouldn't want you suffering yeah. <laughs> right now. Empathetic, uh, <laughs> yeah. the vegan movement of it. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't want you. <laughs> so basically, you were saying, uh, you, uh, as, a, as an advocate, me, I, would, I, I have a, there's a high standard for consistency for me. For sure, for sure, for sure. I basically, and I, I'll say, on the hunch of which tact to go for, I, I suspect you actually are right that the honest one is better because that also treats other vegans as, you know, thinking people. <laughs> and, <laughs> and you're not trying to bullshit anyone, which is probably... Yeah, right. And, which and probably I'm a true... Spe I speak, I speak, speak from, from my heart what I believe is the truth. I'm yeah. not going to... I mean, if you, if you were in the, being... Like, pigs of gas chamber here yeah. in the UK, if you were in that position, I'd be saying, you know, stop, what, stop, what stop. I'm, what, yeah. I'm, what I'm kind of venting, I guess, a bit of frustration on is I'm, I'm in rugby teams yeah. and certain environments, and when I pitch veganism, it completely falls on deaf ears. Um, and that's quite... Um, that's quite crushing, right? If I, if I pitch eat less meat it gets something of a response. And I, I take sort yeah, of, you know, cool. motivation in that. Think about, it. Think about it. Think about this, man. Like if, you, if you're a pack a day smoker and you drink a bottle of whiskey and you love it, like people love eating meat. They're addicted to it. Well, are they addicted? Well, yeah, it's very addictive food. It's very high in calories. It's uh, something they've eaten their entire life. There's a, you know, it's uh, like eating a big steak and things like this. I mean, if you say to someone, remove that thing they love, that messaging is not going to be as appealing as you know, just reduce, reduce a packet, reduce your cigarette consumption, reduce your alcohol consumption, reduce your meat consumption. You know, that's like, okay, reduce. Well, there's no rules here. I just, maybe some days I eat less and maybe some days I eat more. You know, of course that messaging is going to be more appealing, but it's not true. It's not what we want for animals. And as the justice movement for animals, we're kind of just betraying them by saying that. And it doesn't even give us a goalpost to work towards. You're right. I, <laughs> you've changed my mind. And you know what? You know what? If I say go vegan, everyone, he reduces... Uh, he he goes uh, vegan, vegetarian, reduces advocate, activist, activist. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And that's what I, I, I create activists, activists who fight for justice for animals by having this messaging because it creates activists and help. And, and I just think that I, a bunch of re reducetarians, half ass flaky, you know, where do we sit? I don't know on this justice issue would create no change. It would actually be counterproductive. And I think it's counterproductive. And I, I would uh, debate anyone vehemently um, who advocates for advocating for reducetarianism for a justice issue like this. Okay, for sure. So um, I think we've established it's an empirical claim, and I, I hope I come across that I am someone who's willing to change my mind. And if you know, I'm there's something like data of two, say, vegan activist messaging strategies which actually confers like people changing their diets. Um, I will go for whichever one works. Um, now, I, I think you might even say something stronger, which is just on a principled level, you don't want to betray the animal. So, so here's here's my question for you. Okay. Even if the reductionarianism metric decreases funding into um, the animal system actually farming, which would, which would be presumably higher impact in reducing animal suffering, um, would you still advocate the radical vegan position? I, I, yeah. So what you're doing is you're embedding, you're embedding something into your hypothetical here, like if this were true, yeah. would you do this? Yes. Of course. If it were true, mm -hmm. I just don't, it's just like saying, if it were true that, I mean, doing something horrific led to some ultimate good, yeah. would you do it? I mean, yeah, but this isn't reality what we're talking about. We're well, well, I don't know. So, it's so like, uh, so my take... How would, how, would, how would advocating reduction, which is not going to uh, uh, liberate animals and give them rights? It's, it's just there are sometimes tactical questions for civil rights movements. So again, I'm not close enough to the history of this. My understanding of civil rights movements is that you get tr radical trailblazers, um, which people then follow off and um, uh, then uh, they retroactively- Abolitionists. Yeah? If they advocated reduction, do you think they would have got to abolition? I, d I don't know. Um, no, no, a, you probably have a, uh, just give me a, a guess. Um, I suspect not. Um, so I suspect well, abolitionist, you know what the word abolition means. Oh, for, oh, for sure, for sure. I'm an abolitionist for animal, you know, for anim animals, I would call it animal slavery. I would consider them yeah. slaves and property. Yeah, uh, no, I, I think you have sincerely changed my mind because I genuinely, I think the analogy I really had in mind is the Labour Party. Um, and are probably apologists in that movement as well. Ah, oh, you know, like, look, 
just more humane um, slavers and things like this. They, they, they probably did exist. You know, mm. but, um, I'm sure that the abolitionists had something to say about that. Mm. And I'm sure maybe the, the humans that were in servitude had something to say about that too. Mm. For, for, for sure. I, um, I feel like someone who genuinely disagrees with you should probably take my seat. <laughs> okay. You, you totally persuaded me. Okay, no worries. Thank you very much. We okay. didn't get a chance to talk about the, the freeganism, but uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, God, I, I feel like I've said this already and you know, I'm very publicly admitting something I view to be moral failings. Um, but that's, that's good on you, bro. Like, at least you're honest because some people here would just lie straight out to me and I couldn't always pick a liar, basically. <laughs> At this point, I'm like a lawyer when it comes to this topic, man. Mm. I do this all the time, eh? So I, I get your position. You've told me your position. Can I just uh, give you an answer to it before, so, so we don't leave it as an undone thing? So because you're a, you're a, a freegan in some scenarios where you accept meat from people who may have bought it, I don't know where you're getting the scrap meat. Unless you're dumped diving, uh, someone has bought it and you've created demand, secondhand demand through that person because they end up buying more meat to supply to you through this veganism. It can be a, a freeganism can be a bit of a loophole unless you're getting it from dumpsters. Yeah. Now, what it, what it does do, though, is it reinforces to you in your mind that animals are food and they're resources and we can eat them and yada, yada. And then you end up failing over here and over here because you don't have a principle binding your decisions. I think uh, freeganism, even if it didn't doesn't support rights violation, it, it doesn't get us closer to to not viewing animals as food, which is the, the reason that animals are being factory farmed and tortured and murdered and having their rights violated by the billion is because we viewed them as food to begin with, maybe in a survival situation we had to, and that, that stemmed onto some capitalist reason to exploit them and kill them and eggs are food. So now we've got factory farmed eggs to meet this demand. And the reason that viewing animals as food is wrong is because it leads to factory farms and all these things. And we have evidence for that because we have a current what is it, trillions of animals being exploited and killed every year because of this, this view of animals, this mentality towards animals and animal products. So I think vegan, uh, freeganism does that, and that's probably why you have some failings because you already see these products as food. Mm. Me, I ain't eating no meat out of dumpster, man. I see corpses in a dumpster. It's like a morgue to me in there. I'll be like, well, damn, I walked through the butcher and it's like decapitated corpses everywhere, you know what I'm saying? Mm. So yeah, uh, that'd be my response to that. No, totally. Um, I, and it reflects what I've experienced, which is, you know, I've tried to do freeganism for, I guess, however long, and um, I haven't had the reduction in animal product consumption as I guess I wanted. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm sure it's because it was re reinforcing that. Um, and so maybe, yeah, it's just that naive notion that you're not, you are, re you're, you're not reinforcing um, meat as food um, uh, as animals as, as resources let me ask you this you see do you see human beings as food <laughs> I, I try to stay committed to the earlier consequentialism <laughs> <laughs> just ask uh no i look I'm, i'll turn off my philosopher brain then and i'll say no I'm, on pain of inconsistency why, why not no why not um because you see humans as in, have inherent value and it's something oh, horrible about them being decapitated yeah, am i really good you're really going to try and make me say something like this publicly <laughs> Would you eat corpses of humans? I don't know. I hear cooked human meat tastes a bit like roast pork. <laughs> uh, is, is yeah, no, because we're very similar animals. Aren't we? um, oh, God. I mean, oh, God. I mean, well, look, look, I'm committed to the equivalence of rights between uh, animals and humans. So I, those, in, animals, in, those humans have had their rights violation, uh, their rights violated in some horrible, like, totally. food industry mass murder like the animals have. And you're just dumping, you're just going around and picking up the remains and eating them. And no one's, you haven't necessarily violated human rights. Um, Do you see the problem? Totally. The totally mentality? To to totally, totally, totally. Um, I see the severity of um, eating meat as, as a degradation. I, 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 and look, I hope what this demonstrates to people, if this does go public, is the weirdness <laughs> of trying to, de to defend. Um, it's up here, isn't it? It's, it's, uh, it's fundamentally, it's mentality towards animals and animal products, you know, because yeah. you don't have, you don't share that mentality to a human being. Yeah, no, and look, I think, yeah, I think, tr you know, truthfully, I, I still do have that just mentality of uh, meat as food, and um, I haven't deconditioned from it yet, but, but I'd like to. Um, and I think this is, this is giving me some motivation to do so. So thank you very much. Bless you, my friend. Joe? Yeah. Good to meet you. Yeah. Joe meets Joe. Yeah. Thank you, mate.